Answering the question, mom, what's for dinner, shouldn't strike fear into your heart. <laughs> Deciding what's for dinner should not give you a headache just because of that. There's many other things involved with dinner that could give you a headache, right? But just deciding what's for dinner, coming up with dinner ideas, avoiding repeating the same dinners over and over and over, that should not stress you out. That's what we're gonna talk about today, how to not be stressed with that decision. Let's remove one decision to make things less stressful. We're okay, we're not gonna remove that decision. We're gonna make this decision less stressful. Can't do much about all the other decisions mama's gotta make, but this one I can help with. Man, I just tried to continue filming and all of a sudden there was like a really low airplane flying and then sirens going by close by. Okay, so anywho, um, there are a few main topics I'm going to cover. There goes another airplane. Hopefully you can't hear that. <laughs> there are a few main points, I guess, is a better way to say that anyway. Um, a few main points that will help you quickly and easily decide what's for dinner without repeating the same meals over and over again. And my last point is helpful for families with picky eaters. So if you are dealing with a picky eater, be sure to watch all the way through to hear that last point. So my first tips revolve around how to find dinner inspiration for new recipes where you aren't repeating the same things all over and over. There's more sirens. It is a Wednesday morning. Like, I don't know why there's so many sirens going by my house right now. I mean, I know there's a, a fire station, actually not that, I don't know where these sirens are coming from, but I apologize if you can hear them and it's distracting you like it's distracting me dinner inspiration. So my favorite ways to find inspiration for dinner are the internet. <laughs> Obviously we all know Pinterest is a great place to find new recipes, right? Instagram, I'm sharing my dinners basically every night on Instagram. Anytime I cook and I remember to share it on Instagram, which is most nights I'm sharing it. So be sure to follow me at Live Cheap Travel Often on Instagram. Get some dinner inspiration there. Um, but then my other favorite place that may not be as obvious is the library. I kind of hate buying cookbooks. I feel like every time I've bought a cookbook or received a cookbook as a gift, because people know that I love to cook, so I get those a lot as gifts, I only like or want to cook like a fourth of the recipes, if that, from the entire cookbook. And then it's like, this whole cookbook taking up space in my home, right? I'm not a minimal, minimalist by any means, but I don't want things I don't use in my house. So I don't like buying cookbooks or having cookbooks in general. Honestly, I prefer um, saving my favorite recipes on a recipe card or digitally and just using those over and over. <clears throat> but not so much over and over that you're getting tired of them. So also a big point of this is having a variety and a large amount of meals that you rotate through so you aren't repeating the same dinners over and over. So getting back to my point, <laughs> the library is another place that I really love to find new recipes because you can check out a cookbook, you can check out magazines, you can look at just the recipes you actually want to make. You can take a picture of them. You can write them down after you try them. You can return the cookbook or the magazine to the library and it's not cluttering up your house. And you would have access to recipes you may not have had access to for free. <laughs> so free and less clutter. Definitely good in my book, all right? So free inspiration. Another easy way to be inspired when you're making your meal plan, deciding on dinner, is by doing theme nights. So you've probably heard of this one before. Um, things like Meatless Monday, Taco Tuesday, etc. And that can be a really easy way to find inspiration. It like narrows down your choices. So sometimes the issue in deciding what's for dinner is too many choices. You like don't know how to narrow it down and actually pick one. <laughs> and we're gonna tie that into another tip in a second, which ties into a whole other video I have with lots of helpful tips. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but theme nights. So I actually have a freebie that I'm gonna tell you more about in a little bit where I have a list of, I can't remember exactly how many themes are on there, over 20. Over 20 different dinner themes. Um, 
So broad categories like different nationalities and then specifics under that like Tex-Mex night, Italian night, etc. Again, just different ways to spark dinner ideas. The other video that I said I'm about to reference, I am now referencing. <laughs> it's my two videos actually about shopping your kitchen. Two videos, three videos about shopping your kitchen. I have one that's like an introduction on how to shop your kitchen. A second one that's more deep. No, there's only two. I'm lying, there's two. <laughs> two videos on how to shop your kitchen. The first one is an introduction with my tips. And the second one is like behind the scenes of me making a budget meal plan after shopping my kitchen first and like applying those tips. But shopping your kitchen not only saves you money, but it gives you ideas for dinner, which sometimes is an even bigger concern than saving money on groceries, right? It's just what on earth am I gonna make for dinner? What is in your kitchen can inspire you for what to make for dinner. You may look through your pantry, your fridge, your freezer, etc., and realize you have something for a recipe that you haven't made in a while and you're like, oh, we like that recipe. I kind of forgot it existed. <laughs> I've done that before and I won't make something for like six months and then I'm like, oh yeah, we really like that dinner. I should make it again. Just because I noticed something in my pantry and it like pings like, oh, hey, we use that in that recipe. Then I put on my meal plan and check, there's one more dinner planned. Um, but another way that goes back to the internet to shop your kitchen and be inspired for dinner ideas is by um, let's say you have something in your kitchen that you use for one recipe, but you've made that recipe a lot. So I have balsamic vinegar and I make a recipe called um, balsamic chicken and mushrooms. I think I've referenced that in like three videos now, just cause it's an easy example, but it's from the website budget bites. But say I've made that so much, I'm tired of it. And I want to make something else with balsamic vinegar. I will go into Pinterest or even into Google, but I prefer Pinterest. I'll go into Pinterest and I will search balsamic vinegar recipes, recipes using balsamic vinegar, etc. Um, and then I will have hundreds of new ideas for recipes to make with balsamic vinegar. Another easy inspiration and it'll save me money because I'm not buying balsamic vinegar. I am buying the rest of the ingredients for that dinner and hopefully not too many things. Another really important way to take the stress out of deciding what's for dinner and answering that dreaded question, what's for dinner, mom, is by quickly being able to decide what's for dinner. So again, sometimes you have too many options for dinner, especially if you go the Pinterest route. Like if you go to Pinterest and you're like, easy dinner recipes, that can be overwhelming. Even a cookbook sometimes is overwhelming. If you have a cookbook that's like 250 easy weeknight dinner ideas, that's great. But how do you decide? How do you pick which ones to cook? You can go back to my last tip and you can pick based on what's in your kitchen, your kitchen inventory, but also you can narrow that list down by making a list of go-to dinners. So I also have an entire video on this, the best way to do this, the best way to make this go-to list. Um, it was like my second video third video, something like that. So it's not great quality, <laughs> but I will link that video as well in the description. But that is the best way to quickly decide on dinner. Um, I take this a bit further and I, um, how do I explain this? I have my go-to list categorized by night of the week. So I have a um, like, not fluctuating, but I have a different work schedule every day. <laughs> which sounds a little crazy. Oh, that's not true. So my Tuesday, Friday work schedule is the same. My Wednesday, Thursday work schedule is the same. And then I work a little bit on Saturday mornings and I'm off Sunday, Monday, but Sundays we do easy dinners. Also it's every day is different, unfortunately, <laughs> and that can make it hard to plan, but I have my go-to list categorized by, uh, easy dinners for Tuesday and Friday. Actually not Tuesday and Friday. I think I have a Tuesday, Saturday because I decided I just changed this like three days ago. <laughs> I redid my categoriz categorization. I have no idea if that's an actual word. Anyway, I redid the categories on my go-to list and I grouped Tuesday and Saturday together and I decided that Friday is gonna be freezer meals. And I don't mean pre-made freezer meals that I cooked. I mean like frozen pizza, frozen stir fry, things like that. Fridays are gonna be really easy. They're a really long day for me. It's getting towards the end of the week. I have an early morning the next day. We're gonna do freezer meals, pre-made meals on Friday night. So Tuesday, Saturday are easy meals. Uh, Sunday's pretty easy meals too. Monday, I do more complicated meals because that's my day off. 
And then Wednesday, Thursday are meals that I um, prep ahead. So not entirely. I do what I call mini meal prep, where I prep components of dinner. So I may prep the veggies ahead of time, chop them up, whatever. I may prep the sauce ahead of time, things like that. So those two nights, I work a little bit later, but I have a shorter day, so I'm home in the morning more and can prep things. It's, you see what I mean when I say it's a little wonky and complicated? <laughs> but that's what works for me, is categorizing it like that. You may have things like on Wednesday night, we go to church. On Tuesday night, we have baseball practice or baseball games for this kid. On Sundays, we have something going on at our house. So we have a potluck or something like that. Your family and your needs are going to be different. So in that video, I talk about categorizing based on proteins, like, you know, these are chicken recipes, etc. but also based on like the intensity level of the recipe, like crock pot meals versus more complicated meals. Like I said, I make on Mondays because that's my day off. You would probably want to do the same, only have those complicated dinners on your day off. But that go to dinners list is the best way to help you narrow down the endless possibilities for dinner and quickly decide what you're going to make, especially if you have it either categorized or color coded. So if you make it by like chicken recipes, right? <laughs> chicken recipes, uh, maybe you go through and you highlight in a certain color the recipes that are the fastest, the easiest to make. Or if you want to do the mini prep method, which I'm going to talk about later, I've actually got something planned um, that I'm working on to teach you how to follow the mini prep method. Sounds very fancy. Um, follow my method. <laughs> but I'm working on that. But, you know, right now you could totally easily understand how to prep a sauce ahead of time prep veggies ahead of time, etc. So maybe you have a color for that also. Um, and then when you go to make your meal plan, if you're making it for one week, you're like, okay, in these seven days, I need two really fast, easy dinners for these busy nights. I need one crock pot meal. I'm going to plan one meal out just based on your schedule, right? And then you easily just boom, 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 plug in those recipes. Super simple. These other tips, the previous tips are more for finding new ideas to add to the, that list of go-to dinners. Perhaps your go-to dinners list, if you sit down and make it, you realize you only rotate through like 10 recipes. And that can get boring real quick. <laughs> I think I have like 60 plus recipes we rotate through. So that's a lot of options. Um, sometimes it is too many. Sometimes I do get stuck in that too many options. But when I come back to those categories, then I can easily plug it in and get my meal plan made super quick. So how do you expand that list of go-to dinners, your options for dinner, add new options for dinner if you have a picky eater? Or just in general, if you have like a limited palate in your family, whatever, for whatever reason. Uh, maybe you're not the greatest cook. <laughs> you don't have to be an amazing cook to follow these tips either, by the way. You can have the most simple recipes on your meal plan. Um, I'm gonna also have an upcoming video about how to, or my favorite, I don't know, I haven't entirely figured out how I'm gonna do it yet. I guess it'll be a combination of how to make what I call semi-homemade meals slash my favorite semi-homemade meals. So by semi-homemade, I mean using shortcut store-bought ingredients. So a stir fry with a pre-made stir fry sauce with prepared frozen stir fry vegetables, etc. That's really easy. Anybody can make that like ratatouille, right? Anybody can, anyone can cook, whatever the quote is. <laughs> you don't have to be an amazing chef, okay? Anybody can cook, it's really true. Um, and this tip can also be applicable for you if you know how to make a very limited amount of things. <laughs> so definitely not just for the stupendous home chef, all right? These tips are for everyone, no matter what your cooking level is. Anywho. So the easiest way to add variety when you have a limited amount of meals you know you can make for your family that they'll eat that you know how to make is by swapping the flavor profile or swapping the main protein, etc. I talked about this in a previous video also. I believe it's in the shop your kitchen videos. Yes. 
I guess you'll just have to watch all my videos. <laughs> all of my meal planning tip videos are good to watch. So definitely go do that and be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you hear about all these upcoming videos as well. Or so you're notified about all these upcoming videos as well. Anywho, what I mean by making those swaps is one night you have tacos, ground beef tacos. What video is it? I sing the white people taco night. I think it's the shop your kitchen. Yeah. So <laughs> if you've seen that on the internet, it's white people taco night. That's the ground beef tacos, the tr not traditional in Mexican culture, I'm sure, but traditional in white America. <laughs> It's the ground beef tacos with the corn taco shells that you buy at the grocery store, right? You can have tacos like that. You can have shredded chicken tacos. You can make taco pizza. There's different ways to have tacos to do taco night without repeating the exact same meal over and over. However, if your kids will only eat ground beef tacos with corn taco shells, maybe you double the meat one night and then you freeze a little bit of that meat and then the adults in the family or the less picky eaters can have shredded chicken tacos one time and the picky eater eaters can have the regular ground beef tacos that they will eat, right? So again, find what works for you and your family. And in that case, you are making your picky eater their own meal, but you're not having to cook two meals, which is also important. So some other ways to add variety to the meals you know your family will eat um, or some other examples rather. So for me, I make orange chicken and I also make orange ground beef. And I also kind of prefer the orange ground beef because it's faster, like ground beef cooks super quick and you just pour in the orange sauce that I sometimes make ahead, right? So that's really fast. Whereas when I make the chicken, I have to chop up the chicken, I have to bread the chicken, fry the chicken, and then pour the orange sauce on it. That's a lot more work. <laughs> so actually that is a swap that not only adds variety to our dinners, but is an easier one. Um, stir fries are a great way to add variety to your meal plan. You can have stir fry five nights a week and have something different. You can have sesame chicken with broccoli one night and serve it over rice. The next night you can have um, like Kung Pao ground beef pasta. That is not the name of it. It's like beef and noodles, but it's like a Kung Pao sauce. Something like that. It's ground beef and like ramen noodles and a Kung Pao sauce and bell peppers. That is incredibly different than sesame chicken stir fry with broccoli and rice, right? And then the next night you could have Asian meatballs. You'd probably have to repeat things like rice and noodles, but you know, you could have lettuce wraps one night. That's basically stir fry and a lettuce wrap. There's lots of ways to add variety to that one. Also kind of like the tacos. You can have burrito bowls one night. You can have shredded tacos. You can have soft tacos. There's all sorts of ways to serve these same meals over and over without serving the same meals over and over. <laughs> um, pizza is actually a great example as well, or spaghetti, that's generally a crowd pleaser, right? Well, it's like crowd pleaser? Crowd pleaser, spaghetti, pizza. Those are crowd pleasers. So you could have pizza, you could have margarita pizza, you could have um, like non pizza is one of our favorite like lunches for my toddler. Um, you just throw some pizza sauce and mozzarella cheese on a piece of naan. Honestly, that's a good backup dinner. You do have picky eaters if they'll eat that. Um, kids could have their traditional cheese pizza, pepperoni pizza. Mom and dad could have a more unique flatbread pizza, things like that. Um, and then going back to spaghetti, you could have spaghetti and meatballs one night or spaghetti and ground beef, um, meat sauce. <laughs> uh, you could have chicken parmesan. Again, if your kids won't eat chicken parmesan, but they'll eat the meat sauce or meatballs, double that one time, freeze it, make yourself chicken parm, and then you're only making like sauce or whatever. There goes my neighbor revving his engine. <laughs> he does that so often. It's so frustrating. It's so loud. Ah, where was I? Yes, okay, so chicken parm, spaghetti, you could also make meatball subs. That is a way to add a variety to Italian night, pasta night. Um, you can make taco spaghetti, that's a thing. If you Google that, you will find many recipes. Just get a little bit creative and find the ways you can swap these flavors, swap the proteins, mix and match your different meals. You can make things into top, uh, nope. You could make things into tacos. I was going to say salad though. You could make things into salad, um, all sorts of options. 
If you struggle with this and you're kind of stuck on being creative, leave me a comment, DM me on Instagram, and I would love to help. I love coming with creative solutions to things. One last thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to follow recipes exactly. I, going back to the stir fry example, I will find a new recipe that sounds interesting, but maybe I don't want to make ground pork. I don't know if I've ever even seen that at the grocery store, <laughs> but maybe I don't feel like buying ground pork, searching out ground pork. Maybe I don't eat pork. Maybe I don't want pork. I can take the sauce from a ground pork stir fry. How many times am I going to say ground pork? <laughs> I can take the sauce from that recipe and I can put it on chicken. I can put it on ground turkey. I can swap it out really easily. I can just go look at that recipe. And again, you don't have to be an amazing cook to be able to do that. You just look at the recipe, you see which ingredients are in the sauce, make the sauce, cook your meat. <laughs> like that's all you have to do. It sounds much more complicated than it is. So it will take a little bit of practice and time to get creative with these meals and find different ways to swap it out. But again, the internet is a wealth of options, sometimes too much. But the internet is a wealth of options and like I said, leave me a comment or DM me if you would like some help adding varieties to your dinner. And also be sure to follow me on Instagram to see all my dinner ideas. I have a highlight of dinner ideas and I actually need to go in and add uh, more. I need to add some more of my stories that I've shared into that highlight on Instagram, um, which I'll do probably before this video is actually posted so there will be even more options on there for you to take a look at. And I usually... If it's a recipe you can find on the internet and not one I made up myself, I'll share the link on Instagram so you'll be able to find the links there. But again, you can DM me if you see something I share and you're like, hey, how do you make that? Can you share the recipe link? If it's not a link, I will tell you how I make it. I will share my own personal recipe with you. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, turn on notifications to hear all my upcoming tips and tricks for answering the question, what's for dinner, mom, and saving you time, money, and sanity when it comes to making dinner and just being in the kitchen in general. See you next time in my budget kitchen. I totally forgot to talk again about uh, the freebie that is going to help you answer the question, what's for dinner, mom? So <laughs> I mentioned that it'll have my list of theme ideas for dinner, but it is also going to have a summary of all of these tips of how to help you decide on dinner, how to find dinner inspiration, and more. There's gonna be more in there. Um, I'll have the details down in the description below. I'll have a link where you can grab that freebie. It's just an easy, quick download. And then you can print it out, be on your merry way to deciding dinner much more easily.